A big problem I feel like we have today is that we often expect some sort of a magic pill to turn up and solve all of our problems. I used to turn to retail therapy as a quick fix to solve my problems and my personal issues, which ended up in me having an overflowing closet full of stuff that didn't even fulfill me. It was a waste of my time, money, energy and resources. And there's no quick fix to the real and deep things in life. Good things simply take time. Now, no one goes through an entire life without experiencing some form of loss, grief or traumatic experiences. So forcing ourselves to just be happy or look at the bright side of life always, it might lead us to burnouts. Like one of my favorite YouTubers, Matt Diavella, puts it in his happiness paradox video. If you force yourself to ride the wave of happiness, you might end up drowning. But if you go with the flow, if you relax and try to let yourself drown, you might actually end up floating. So happiness is not about walking around with a huge smile on your face every single day. It's not about chasing highs. It is about generally living a life that is aligned with your values and mindfully accepting and working with whatever life throws at you. I always instantly feel better and more uplifted if I cuddle my dog, if I kiss him on the nose. And it's not about this one simple act of kindness. It's about implementing several acts of kindness into your everyday life, not only towards yourself, but also towards others, which will all add up to a happier life in general. So in today's video, I wanted to share 10 simple things that I like to do when my mood needs a bit of a boost, which all adds up to the bigger picture of living a happier life a hot drink and a good movie or book. I love making hot oat milk cocoa, for example. That's one of my favorite hot drinks besides tea. So I simply warm up a cup of oat milk, add a couple of teaspoons of raw cocoa powder. And if you'd like to sweeten it just a little bit, you could add a bit of sugar or maybe some stevia sweetener to keep things a bit more light and healthy. On a rainy and super dull day where all energy has just left my mind and my body, I'd probably even put on The Untouchables or Good Will Hunting for the 117th time. I'm a sucker for any kind of feel-good movies like these. Puzzles and a podcast. This is probably my favorite way to either start the day if I have time or at least to end it after a long day at my desk in front of my computer. It's a nice way to sort of educate myself and use my brain, but in a really relaxing way. I'm currently doing one of these so-called destiny puzzles. So a thousand piece puzzle here. I'm almost done. I've been working on this for the past three weeks. I've done one of these before. It's really funny because whatever's on the box is actually not what you are what you have to remake. You kind of have to look into the future and guess what is happening. So it's really hard. It really challenges you and you really have to think, um, which is what I like about these Destiny puzzles. This one I got from my sister-in-law. We tend to swap puzzles in my family like among my family and friends every once in a while, at least those of us who enjoy doing puzzles. So whenever we're finished with one, we will swap to another one because usually these are only fun doing ones. So trying to keep sustainability in mind like that. And then maybe in a year or so, I'll find it fun to do this one more time when I've kind of forgotten how it was. Right now I'm enjoying the podcast called Wardrobe Crisis with Claire Press, which is really great. I can highly recommend it for anyone who's interested in fashion because it unravels the complexity of sustainable fashion and this whole thing trying to build up and fix an entire industry. It's really interesting. Baking. It doesn't have to be cakes or cardamom rolls or something sweet like that every single time. You can bake something a bit more healthy like oat buns or some sort of a healthy cracker that you can eat as a snack in the afternoon. So yesterday I baked the biggest batch of oat buns I've ever made in my entire life. Let me just show you something. We've got enough buns here to feed a tiny village. Alaska. They're so easy to just defrost on the kitchen table, pop into the oven for around seven minutes till they get really crispy again. Oh, love it. Support local and independent shops. Now, even though I highly encourage you guys to buy less stuff, to try and fill that void and to use retail therapy as a way to get yourself in a better mood, 
I do find it important and also quite enjoyable to support local businesses and independent shops and brands. Even just for window shopping sometimes it's always nice to get some inspiration and just to get out there. We have a couple of cute little tea and chocolate stores around my local area and to me buying a really good organic tea or really good organic dark chocolate for example is one of those things that I love to treat myself with every once in a while. Sunday brunch. I love going for a brunch on a Sunday with my husband or some friends or with family. Even just making a homemade brunch. Some days we even treat ourselves with other things than just a typical oatmeal porridge in the morning on a regular weekday. We simply get out of bed a bit earlier, heat up some homemade buns, boil a couple of eggs and slice up some fruit and then have breakfast together really slowly. It's a lovely way to start the day even on just a regular dull Wednesday. A pamper night. Oh, this is one of my absolute favorite things to do. It's a great way to end a long day and just a great way to be kinder to yourself. So I love doing a bit of a face mask, maybe exfoliate my body, use my favorite beauty tools and drench my entire body in my favorite body oil. Maybe even paint my nails in my favorite nail color while watching some sort of a chick flick on the TV to turn off my brain. That is something I love doing, especially throughout the winter months. Fresh flowers. Flowers and plants sort of have an aroma therapeutic power on us, all while adding coziness and warmth to any atmosphere. Plus, they also tend to freshen up the air surrounding us. I take great pride in caring for my plants around the house. We've had some of them for as long as four to five years now. But buying a little bouquet of fresh flowers every once in a while is something I also enjoy doing, or better yet, picking them myself throughout the summer or autumn season. That's something I really love doing as well. Weekend, cabin or a day at the spa. This is something we tend to do only one to twice a year because it's a bit of a more luxurious event, really. So we tend to go away a weekend at the spa every February to celebrate our anniversary. It's something we've been doing for the past five years, I think. And then sometimes we also escape to a little island called Fire with my brother and his girlfriend. It's a magical little island. In general, it's actually my favorite way of having a vacation at all, just to be there and not care about how you look and just be fully relaxed and in the moment. I love that. We are well arrived at the cottage now. We're already like making a mess, feeling at home. And um, yeah, maybe I should give you guys a little quick tour. Let me do that. The boys just did a workout on the terrace. There's Thomas sweating. So this is the cottage. You might remember it from last year. So Thomas and my sister-in-law are staying in there. So here we have a shower and then there's an extra uh, bathroom in here. And then we have a small humble kitchen. We're already making a mess, like I said, because we are preparing dinner. And then we have the living room which is very cozy. And then we have the bedroom where Martin and I are sleeping. So we just need to put on our bedding and everything already unpacked. Invest in a good scented candle. I love scented candles, especially those that have a scent of lavender because it's just really uplifting and calming at the same time. I try my best to go for soy-based candles because they're a bit more gentle on you and the environment. And this is even something you could enjoy at your desk at work, maybe not the entire day, but just every once in a while to give yourself a little bit of a mood booster to stimulate your senses. Take the day off without purpose. Time is the number one biggest luxury that we have these days. So mindfully taking some time off to do nothing, to not follow a schedule or a to-do list is really important to me. Practice the art of saying no, even if you don't have any plans. Maybe your plans could be to do nothing. So give yourself a little bit of a break by taking the day off, see what the day might bring, what you feel like doing, that particular day instead of always planning ahead. It's really a great way to check in with yourself and generally slow down. Talking happiness is not about your problem versus mine. It's more about unity and what we might have in common. 
I do realize and acknowledge that it's an absolute privilege to even have a choice. But just remember that we all have different stories. I went through a quite troublesome childhood and had to grow up outside of my home because my biological parents couldn't take care of me. So I too have experienced loss and grief and traumatic experiences like many other people have in their early 30s. We're not all enabled with positivity, but what we all have in common is that we can all see possibilities. Just like you can't expect one session of yoga to magically sort out all of your life's problems and to make you feel better, everyday hygge, everyday happiness and kindness is a lifestyle. And it's something you need to look at as a lifestyle you need to keep up with in order to truly feel the power of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was inspiring and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!